let's take a look at a short clip from The Wizard of Oz um, and focus on how the background music is working and how it's creating this particular atmosphere of a sort of light, hopeful, but also slightly ambiguous or open-ended kind of feeling. And it all has to do with the Mixolydian mode. So let's get into it. Which way do we go? Pardon me. So broadly speaking, the first couple of chords, I'm thinking of it all as just being F7, F dominant 7. So I'll play that again more slowly. So we have this chord, which is a sort of E flat major 7 over F, then followed by this chord, which is just a sort of F7, pretty standard. Then we have this chord, it's the same shape as our first one, just moved down along what we'll see as the Mixolydian scale. So we have that chord, and then finally we have this chord, which is a sort of B-flat-6 chord, um, only in this particular inversion and with an F in the bass. What I wanted to point out here is that all of these chords, and all of the melody notes for that matter, are all derived from the F Mixolydian scale. So what is that? So an F major scale would just be this. An F Mixolydian scale, we just need to make one alteration, and that's on the seventh, just before we get to the top of our scale, we're going to play an E flat. We're going to drop the seventh. We're going to flatten it. So we're going to move it down a half step. So our Mixolydian scale in F looks like this. Let's do the same thing in C major. So a C major scale looks like that. We're going to alter it slightly to get our Mixolydian scale. And you might be reminded by seeing that B flat in relation to a C that the B flat is what gives us our C7 chord if we were to play a C dominant seventh, just as an F. Our F dominant seventh chord looks like that, and it's the E flat that's giving it its characteristic sound. So the Mixolydian scale, or the dominant seventh scale, as you could also call it, um, is what we tend to pair with this chord, this dominant seventh chord. Um, so yeah, it's as simple as that. You have major scales, you have minor scales, and you have dominant seventh scales, or Mixolydian scales. So if we play the Mixolydian uh, scale two notes at a time, or three notes at a time. And if I do it with four notes, you really start to hear that sound. Especially if you start to sketch out melodies. So that's exactly what the composer's doing here. He's just using some block chords and all of the notes of the chords conform to this scale. They're just drawing notes from this pool of notes, the F Mixolydian scale. So we get this. So although we can think about each chord type as individual, you can also just think of it as all just chunks of notes that are being grabbed from the F Mixolydian scale. And more importantly, that are sketching out a kind of hummable accompanying pattern. Ba, 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 ba. So it all has this kind of open, uh, sort of questioning feeling because of the fact that that's the characteristic sound of Mixolydian. One particular detail that makes this first four set of chords particularly satisfying is um, the fact that when we do sort of consider each shape um, for what it is, these, these ones are kind of more associated with F7, more naturally. And then the latter two, um, they do only contain notes from the F7 scale, the F Mixolydian scale, but if I swap the bass note out for a B flat, 
you'll hear, to me anyway, I interpret these two shapes as more belonging to the world of B-flat major. So an F7 is the dominant chord of B-flat major. Um, so there's a relationship there. So it's not coincidental that you've got sort of internally within this sort of nested within this overall F7 thing, you've got a movement or a cadence of f 7 e type chords and then B-flat type chords, but all, all the while over this pedal note, this repeated note of an F. So you've got this kind of f 7 e chords and then resolving to a kind of B-flat. Let's have a quick listen to the next section of music. So here we've taken the same sort of concept, but just we've moved the whole thing up a fourth to B-flat. And moving from an F key area to a B-flat key area feels very natural. It's just following the cycle of fourths, which I won't go into here, but suffice it to say that it's just one of those stock chord progressions that feels very natural. It feels like you're just taking another step in a kind of positive direction. So um, in B-flat we have this sort of thing. I'll do that again more slowly, so... So the first chord is a A flat major 7 over a B flat. It's a major 7th that's derived from the note below the root. So our root is B flat. The tone below that is an A flat, and it's an A flat major 7, and it's giving us that particular kind of... Well, it's a sus 13. Um, more importantly, it's just a particularly nice kind of floaty way of playing a B flat dominant seventh. Um, and then it going it goes to a more traditional B flat seventh, B flat dominant seventh. Then it does a similar thing. It does this shape, which is just the same as the first one, but moved down. So you got that kind of continuation. And it's also sounds a bit like an E flat chord. So the second two chords of the sequence are this. So it's doing that same thing. It's going sort of B-flat 7-ish to E-flat, but all over B-flat. So you get this. And once again, every note that I was playing there is derived from the B-flat dominant scale or B-flat mixolydian scale, which is what's part of what's giving it that kind of overall sense of anticipation. Let's move on to the final section. We've got this. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow. Now it. So we have this. So once again, we've got our root note E flat, and then we're thinking a tone below that is D flat. D flat major seven over an E flat gives us that sound. Then we're moving the same shape just down through the scale, through the E-flat mixolydian scale, which is like this. And that's how this line is being generated. And then I believe it just goes to a E-flat dominant seventh there. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow. Now it which way do we go? Experiment with staying on a mixolydian type sound and then progressing through the cycle of fourths, for example, say to an F, doing the whole thing up there, maybe move to another chord. Or try progressing in a different way, start on a B flat, go up a tone. And again. I hope that was an enjoyable little visit into the world of Oz. And um, all that remains to say is thanks very much for joining me. Let me know any questions that you have. Special shout out to Sky Leo who commented on a previous video and um, linked me to this particular composition and sort of got me started down this rabbit hole. So um, yeah, thanks for that. I look forward to hearing your comments and thoughts and any favorite pieces of music in the uh, thread below. And um, yeah, all that remains to say is thanks very much for your time. Thanks for your attention. See you on the next video.